Hi, I'm Tim. Join me as I take the Guilo's Aronka Champion 85 model airplane kit, add radio control, and come up with this. Spoiler alert, this plane flies perfectly. Let's get to it. The Aronke is a light aircraft that was manufactured in Ohio, started in 1945, right after World War II. There was a belief that there was going to be a big flying boom in the uh, civilian aviation market with returning military pilots. They built about 8,000 of these champs, and they were viewed as a competitor to the J-3 Cub. It was an inexpensive airplane, two people, four and a half. One of the nice features of it, if you flew it by yourself, you could sit in the front seat. And I think it's going to make a good candidate for a radio control model airplane. A very important part for build, building uh, a Guilo's model is what are you going to control and power it with. And you'll know from my other videos, and I've, um, I've, I've converted about three Guilo's models, <clears throat> I always use the Park Zone line of ultra micro electronics, and th these are the electronics right here. So again, for first time viewers, this is the what I call the control brick, and on this circuit board, are two linear servos for the rudder and elevator. It will be a three-channel model with rudder, elevator, and throttle. Electronic speed control, the receiver, this connects to the battery, and then this is the motor, the geared electric motor uh, for the airplane. This can fly a model up to 2.5 ounces. Again, I'm going to shoot for 2 ounces on this. Because this is such a incredibly convenient power system, because it's just this whole thing with the battery weighs 0 0.6 ounces. It's just a very nice fit for these smaller models, but your task at a, as a builder is to make that model as light as possible. The expression I use is build in lightness. And just to show you what it looks like in another Guilo's model, this is the Arrow, which flies great. And you can see underneath here, there's the park zone brick with the control rods to the rudder and elevator. Here's the motor a little bit of uh, washers to get the center of um, gravity correct, but it's just a great little fit for these um, Guilo's models. At this time, we will take a look at the box for the um, Aronka Champion 85. And so what I'm looking at for here is obviously the standard Guilo's artwork. It is laser cut, which means the parts are going to be much better cut out um, on there. And also it's been my experience that the laser cut kits have a better quality of wood, i.e. a lighter weight wood, than the old die cutting. Now the one thing that catches my attention is the 24 inch wingspan, okay? That is what leads me to think about weight for the airplane. So with my experience with converting Guilo's airplanes, a 24 inch wingspan can fly, but you wanna keep it weight. I would say that the uh, target weight would be two ounces, maybe 2.2 ounces, because there's a little bit thicker cord on this wing, the width of the wing. But that'll be a driving consideration of the whole construction, just making this model as lightweight as possible. This is not part of the kit. I bought these one inch tail wheels from Dubro. Um, I think that will be just about the right size for the models. So that, that'll be an option for this. But again, that was a separate buy. Got the plastic cowl, which is nice to have. So we'll put that to the side. The decal sheet, I think is good. Water slide decals, uh, those will be nice. There is an insert with a photo illustration guide for the fuselage with a picture and the isometric diagrams, the wings, and then over here, the tail surfaces and the, assembling the model. So remember, these Guilo ones are designed to be rubber-powered free-flight designs. That's what the instructors all steer you towards. You can put on a gas engine, although I don't think too many people do that, but today with the lightweight electrical engines, that would be the power that 98% of the people will use. So as you look at the fuselage, it's very standard Guilo's construction. You build half the fuselage on the plan with the formers. You put in a side um, uh, spar. Side panels for the windows and all that. Then you get the finished fuselage. So again, weight, weight, weight is critical. I may leave out some of the stringers. I don't know. Just see how it has to go down. Also, 
We'll have to pay attention to the firewall because we have to install the electric motor, but we'll work that as we build the motor, uh, as we build the model. The wings, just looking at this, it looks like there's a more ribs than needed for that wing. I may every other rib, rib not put it in or put in a false rib, just the front third of it. Um, we'll see how that goes as I build the model just on the way. But this is a, a robust wing for a gas powered model. It might be suitable, but I don't think it's going to be needed for this model. Also, the tail surfaces, I'll have to do some thinking. I plan on covering it with monocoat covering. This is lightweight, it's perfect for tissue. I'm not sure it's going to be strong enough for the heat shrink covering. I may just make that 1 16th inch sheet balsa um, just to make it a solid. Uh, surface. I, I think that is probably what I'm going to do, but we'll figure it out as we go along. These are the plans. We'll take a look at these in a moment. You get a little package, again, the plastic prop for the rubber powered free flight, the wheels. We'll see what's the lighter weight. I may wind up using these. Well, I, I don't know at this time. There is the small amount of rubber. I don't think that's enough, but we're not going to use that or worry about it. These are the spars for the wings. This is big for a Guilos kit, but they're they're good quality ball, balsa. They're they're quite light lightweight. I think I can I can live with these. These are the 116th inch stringer. Again, good balsa. I, I like it. It's lightweight. And then these are the uh, laser cut parts. Um, again, looks like good balsa and everything's labeled and they should come out pretty easy from the laser cutting. So that that looks that looks good. The tissue, uh, tissue is certainly a fine covering for a model like this uh, for radio control. If you want to use a tissue, that there's nothing wrong with that. Again, I'm going to use the um, lightweight monocoat. They even include a little bit of the uh, music wire for the landing gear. So that's the kit. Let's take a look at the plans real quick, and then we'll start building the airplane. So the way it works, these are the three views on this side for everything, and then just a more of an explanation with pictures and diagrams, the side view of the fuselage, all that good stuff. So again, these are the wings. I think there's way too many ribs for what I want on this. The extra ribs may be for the um, struts holding up the wing. I'll, I'll, I'll examine that as I build the model. Again, modifications to the forward fusel uh, formers for the motor. I may have to cut away some of this. We'll, we'll see as we do it. The landing gear is always a weak part of the wheelers models. I will not do this because that's just designed to break off. I will have some scheme where the landing gear goes onto the form and maybe with a ply reinforcement just so that is a strong standalone thing. There is no way that would hold up to any sort of flying. In the side view of the ribs uh, with the, that uh, fairly large spar there, uh, the, the struts uh, are there, the fuselage keels, Tail surfaces again, probably uh, solid balsa, windshield template. Again, a good set of plans. This is this is standard Guilo stuff. Remember, your side view of the fuselage is on this side. There's a lot of information there with the various braces and all that to make it look like an Aronka. Um, they have a key to the fuselage cover for tissue, which is helpful. Back in the old days, a Cox 020 engine or something like that. That's a ton of power if anybody ever put that on. And a good picture of the finished airplane. Cowling will be a little bit tricky, but I've got some very thin acetate and clear canopy glue. I think that'll go on. Also, I'm going to have to do some thinking about putting on the wings. The wings are two halves. You can see that from the construction over here. Okay, and you don't connect the two halves like you do in a lot of models. You connect them to the fuselage. So there has to be fairly strong cross-through members to keep the wings bolted on. I think what I'm pro going to probably use is um, barbecue skewers that you put like shrimp and for um, kebabs on and, and string those through for the um, wing strengthening of the center section with the necessary dihedral. Again, I'll, I'll work on that when I get to that point. So I don't think there's any surprises on this. The plans look fine. Uh, again, the wingspan is 24 inches. The length is 15 and 3 quarters inches. It's going to be a small model. but. Um, I think it'll be fun. I've, I've not built this before, so we will give it a shot. This is a view of the beginning of the fuselage assembly with the keel laid down and the initial formers is placed on top. The formers, half the fuselage is glued in place with a side keel, and uh, just make sure your formers are straight when you do this.
This is a view of the other half of the fuselage uh, glued in place with the beginnings of the top of the fuselage for the wing. On the Aronica was just the sheer number of ribs. I don't know why they have so many ribs. Some are for the strut attachment points, but I just don't think I need that many ribs. So if you look at the picture here, I when I built the wing, I basically skipped every rib, so I just have this. In addition, they had a very large uh, rib for or, or spar for the bottom. And what I did was I just took two 16th inch square and glued it together. So that is half the size. And by gluing the 1 16th inch square together, it adds quite a bit of strength. Also notice on the trailing edge, I scalloped out little pieces here again, just to make it a little bit lighter. So I think this is about right. And we've done the two wing halves like this. This is the fuselage so far. Again, this picture assembly kit is really quite helpful. They have the isometric drawings here, one through uh, nine, <clears throat> and these numbers correspond to steps along here. It, it, it helps to organize the way that you put it together with the side panels and all that. Now, the one thing that I am going to do that's quite a bit different here is the mounting of the wing to the fuselage. If you notice, these side panels right here, step six, and I'll show this here, uh, to you in a moment, is glued to the side of the fuselage and you have to glue each wing half to this side panel. The problem is if I want to glue these wing halves to the half, it's gonna be very hard to get them both the same incidence. If they're a little bit off, the plane's just not gonna fly. So what my plan is, is to glue this to a single unit with dihedral on the wing and then mount this flat on top of the um, fuselage. So what I've done on that, these are the side panels that go on like this. You crack it here and they go over, but you theoretically glue the wing onto the end right like that, but it's gonna be very hard to get them the same angle. What I'm gonna do is just cut off this top portion. This is an extra wing rib that goes on like this. So I'm just gonna cut off this top portion so that it looks something like this. And then the, main, the wing will be mounted flat. I'll build a flat surface on top to mount the single piece wing on top. So that is what I intend to do. And I just wanted to show you that before I glued everything in place. So again, here's the one right out of the kit. And here with this top half cut off is what it looks like for the fuselage so far. I've made very good progress today. This is all one day's worth of work. Now uh, here's a fuselage with the stringers in. And if you look with this side piece, there was the airfoil built in on the top. I cut that off so we have a relatively flat surface for the wing. You can see all the, the stringers are in place. It's a very, it's a very strong fuselage with all the stringers. This is the wing. I gave it about one half inch dihedral on each half. The directions weren't really clear on the dihedral. And I just put a bunch of uh, balsa stringers across the top to keep it um, joined properly. And then I put two mounting balsa strips on the bottom. So I think for a lightweight model, that should be strong enough. It feels like a pretty strong wing. So what will happen is this will be glued on place on top, and that way we have a nice um, straight wing. So tomorrow we'll do the tail surfaces. That will be solid balsa. I've, I've made that determination. We'll glue those on place. I'll have to figure out the best way to install the landing gear. I'll do that tomorrow. And also, I realize I'm gonna have to cut away some of these formers. I'll work on that so that we can install the park zone electronics and, and see them for the control uh, rod linkages at that time. I've got the uh, stabilizer on that's just glued on, 1 16th inch balsa. And I've got all the um, elevator and fin portions. I'll glue those on next. A big step was the installation of the engine. And what I did was made a little shelf out of um, thick balsa, probably a little over 1 8 inch. And then on the top and on the bottom, I reinforce it with some popsicle sticks uh, glued to the firewall. I think that'll be enough to hold it on. I'll probably put some additional bracing and wiring here. 
The other trick was to make sure that the motor lined up somewhat with the cowl. So uh, that's the advantage of the shelf. I can make it as high or low centered and so the cowl will fit on pretty good to where the motor is um, for the completed model. The other thing that needed to be done was a landing gear. And so what I did was I made a little sandwich of a popsicle stick and the fuselage former and epoxy that in with the music wire. I think that will be strong enough for a light model like this. But again, this is a little bit of an experiment how that goes. I also have to make a cutout here to install the Park Zone electronics. So that'll fit in rather nicely there. And I'll make it pretty close to the bottom so I can connect the um, control rods for the rudder and elevator. And then the music wire will run through back to the control surfaces in the back. The final thing is the wing is completed with the joint. And so at some point I will glue that in place and the wing will be on like that. So in a stage now where I'm going to take this um, Aranka for a test flight. It's not done yet. The cowling obviously is not in place. I don't have the <coughs> completed wheel struts or the wing struts in. But one of the advantages of electric flight is you can take planes out before they're actually complete just to see how they fly before you spend a lot of time and energy putting on decals and things of that nature. So I, I think it's in good shape. Uh, what I've done is I've left the bottom uncovered a fair amount just so I can t keep an eye on the um, control rods and the electronics to make sure everything's okay there. I got the Velcro for the battery, the um, nut for the center of gravity, some extra popsicle sticks on the engine mount. And the cowl I just taped in place with scotch tape. I, I realized with these smaller models, tape is a surprisingly useful thing for both the hinges and to put on things like the cowling. So we'll give it for a test flight, see how it works. It's about 2.3 ounces. And if the flight goes okay, then we will come back and put on the finishing details and be done uh, with this version of the Aranka. So we just did the first three mated flights of the Aranka. I could not be any happier. The plane is rock steady. It flies well. It comes in at 2.3 ounces, but I've got enough power. I was flying a little over half throttle. So the first couple flights that I, I didn't bother showing the video, there was just way too much rudder, just the way this airplane is, is built. So I took away some of the rudder travel, plenty of elevator. It just couldn't fly any better. So what I'll do, uh, tomorrow is put on the cowl and then <clears throat> perhaps some wheel pins here. I don't think I'm going to do the struts because that's that'll be a separate discussion, but could not be any happier with how the Guilo's Aranka uh, aircraft flies. We had the test flights yesterday with just the basic structure. There was no cowl or, or struts on it. Uh, the plane flew well. So we finished it up. Uh, we put the acetate all around for the windows. We added the struts, uh, the wing struts. I put on the cowl and noticed that the I, I had measured the placement of the motor before um, as part of the building, obviously, in, in anticipation of the cowl. But you have to get the cowl over the prop shaft. With these park zone motors, the propeller is screwed onto the shaft of the electric motor. And it's tricky to get that on exactly right. If it's just a little bit off and it's off center, you'll get a vibrating uh, prop. So it's my recommendation, once you get the prop screwed onto the shaft of the uh, motor, don't take it off, leave it on there. So what I elected to do was just to cut the cowl through here to open it up a little bit and fit it over the shaft, and that worked out well. You notice that there was just a little bit of extra room from the bolt used for the CG. That's just part of the rough prototype um, design process. Note also that I had to leave the bottom open for the battery. Again, just experimenting with this, I left this open to see the electronics. Note also, this is again what I call a rough prototype. I just put the model together fairly quickly to see how it works. A second one could be much more elegant and refined. Notice, for example, there's three 16-inch stringers along here. This is asking a lot with a shrinking monocoat. It's just not that strong. If I were to build it again, I would put two 1 16th inch stringers together, glue them together just for a little bit more strength, uh, things of that nature. But overall, I think we're ready to give it a flight.
We just finished the uh, second flight, this time with the cowl and the struts in place, and you can see from the video the plane flies great. Even at a higher weight of 2.9 ounces, that's, that's a lot of weight. But I think it's due to the increased wing area. So what we'll do, we'll go back to the shop, talk a little bit about this for the post flight for your build. But while we're out here, I just want to show you one thing, the amount of control throw for this model. So this is up elevator, down elevator. You can see there's a lot of the elevator, but the rudder, a little bit less. That's how much throw I have on my model. So I think that's a good starting point for you <clears throat> in your Aronka should you want to build it. Okay, we're back from our test flight with the uh, cowl and the uh, struts on. The, the plane flew great, you can see in the video. <clears throat> it, the, the weight with the struts and, and everything else added came up to 2.9 ounces. That, that's a lot for a model like this. It was at my upper limit. But the plane flew well. It really wasn't that fast. There was plenty of power. I was at half, three quarters of a throttle for the whole flight. The reason for that, I believe, is it's a 24 inch wingspan, but there's a fairly good cord on it. There's a lot of um, wing area compared to like the arrow. And I think that makes a difference with it flying. Um, I'll just leave it at that. So it's very encouraged to see that you can go up to three ounces really with the park zone if you have the right wing. One important thing that I help think the model flies better is I added a little bit of positive incidence to the wing. If you look at the plans, the wing is absolutely level to the top of the fuselage. Incidence is how the wing is mounted onto the airplane. Most models, smaller models, will have a little bit positive incidence, the leading edge a little bit higher than the trailing edge. What I did was, with the wing laid flat on top of the fuselage, you can't really see it, but there's a 1 16th inch piece of balsa on the top of the fuselage inside that just raises the front of the wing 1 16th of an inch. I think that is a good and useful thing to do to have a little bit better flying model like this, that this is a slow flying model that has to fly on the wing. I apologize for the continuous circles on the flights. It was a fairly small flying area. <clears throat> it's a office park near where I live. But if nothing else, it shows that the model can fly in that tight space. If you have a little bit larger area, it's just going to be that much easier to fly. One other technique for these rough prototypes that I did, the red covering on the cowl is a, is a styrene plastic cowl. I actually ironed on the um, lightweight monocoat and it went on pretty well. Again, just an experiment for to try that. The other thing I did was I used a lot of uh, scotch tape just to hold on the cowl. Scotch tape holds on the cowl. It holds on the acetate for the windshield. I even put some scotch tape here for the struts to hold them in place on the monocoat. Now that's no way a long-term solution, but again, this is a rough prototype to see how everything goes together. Because these struts are gonna be a high failure ride, I'm just hitting bushes and trees. I think what I would do if I was gonna do it again is just to have some very small uh, rare earth magnets on either end and just let the magnets hold everything in place so they can knock off fairly easily. So overall, very pleased with this model. Um, I, I just I think it's, it's, it's worth building, and you can see that it, it flies exceptionally well. So if you want to give one a try with your, with, on your own, hopefully this is of some help, and best of luck.